Um, some other things which uh, were pointed out. Um, we had this thing called the three door poison arrow, which is when you have three doors aligned which open um, one after the other. And also, we, we didn't just have one three door poison arrow, we had two of them because we had double door, two sets of double doors, another set of double doors, and two lifts. So we had two sets of poison arrows coming through the main reception area. We had a little round planter in the middle, which sort of helped the situation, but it still wasn't very good. And also, Simon pointed out that when you've got two sets of entrances and when you got to our floor, there were also two entrance doors. You start to get division in the company, and that's what happened because our business development teams were on one side and our admin teams were on the other, and they started to have infighting. It's all their fault that we're not doing well. That, those kind of stresses that you get in a business. Interestingly, at the time, we had been asked to go to Marks and Spencer to do a big retail contract around experiences. And knowing a little bit about Feng Shui, I was horrified to discover that they had a five-door poison arrow. <laughs> doors opening on doors, opening to a turnstile, opening to a corridor with a, a window at the other end. So they had a five-door poison arrow. And I actually felt so strongly about it. And this was at the time, this was shortly after they crashed in, you know, in, in 1997, I think yeah. it was, where everything just went completely wrong for the business. And I felt so strongly about it, I mentioned it to the marketing manager. And then the next time I visited, they'd actually changed the whole way that they laid it out. So you came to a reception and then went round to the turnstiles. And then they later moved to a new HQ and the business is now revived. So it's really interesting when you start looking at how business is performing and looking what's happening with where they're moving and where, what's happening in their headquarters. The other thing to really be careful of in business is who you place in the power seats. Um, so if you imagine this is the floor plan of your office and at the bottom here this blue circle is your entrance, the power seats, this is in certain school of feng shui, which I think is called the form school. Is that three I'm looking gate. at? Three oh, right, three, three, gate. Gate. three gate. Okay. So in this feng shui, the far left-hand corner and the far right-hand corner are your power seats. The far left-hand corner is your wealth sector. The far right-hand corner is your relationship sector. So I, my office was based in the relationship sector, which was great, and I was the front person, and I was getting lots of fame, and, and things were coming to me, and I was the deal maker in the business. The person I put in the wealth sector was the customer services director. And you might think, well, what's a customer services director got to do with wealth, really? But the first customer services director we had, his brief was to deliver exceptional customer service. And one of the ways that he did this was by instructing his team that any voucher that someone phoned to say they had a voucher but it had expired, he allowed the team, as a goodwill gesture, to redeem it. So if you phoned, this was, bear in mind this was in, in sort of 2001, 2002, if you phoned and said, my dog ate my voucher in 1990, he'd say, oh well, we'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> So we were making all this money. Our management accounts were showing we we're making all these millions of pounds of profit. But I was saying, where is it? Where's the money? It's not showing in our bank. What's happening? You know? And we finally discovered that actually the cost of all this, because bear in mind, those vouchers were being written off in our accounts. We finally discovered, by the time it was too late, that three million pounds worth of these vouchers had been redeemed in that wonderful gesture towards customer goodwill. So that was first customer services director who sort of exited the business and then the guy that I replaced him with, he actually voted against me when it came to the final meltdown of the business. He was a board director and he voted against my interest because he <coughs> sort of had a bit of an incentive to do so, shall we say, from the acquiring party. So be very careful about who you put in your wealth sector because you are giving them tremendous power so make sure it is someone who you absolutely trust and who is going to be really good with helping you to create the money. Ideally, that should be your finance director who is someone you trust with your life. So we had all of, this, all of these things moving against the business. And I am a fighter, and I believe me, I fought against every 
every missile that was coming at me from every direction, but there's a limit to how much, how much you can do. We experienced really bad cash flow problems. We were bonded by our bank. Uh, we had the issue with the vouchers. We had loads of stu stuff hitting us all at once. The business went from that million pound profit and plunged into a 4.7 million pound loss in 2003. And I fought for two and a half years to try and save it, to refinance, to renegotiate, to do whatever I could to get it back on track. We finally were forced into administration in 2005. The interesting thing, it was actually bought out of administration for peanuts by my fellow dragons, Peter and Theo. The interesting thing, they haven't managed to save the business. Two very talented, very rich guys still haven't managed to save the business. And it's, in fact, it's since made 10 million pounds worth of losses. So my advice to Peter and Theo, move office. Because <laughs> it ain't going to work while you're still there. So, but I, they, they, they are still there. And just, I'm just such a, I'm so interested in business and how feng shui affects things. And I have to be really careful what I say here because I have got Simon in the front here who I know was involved in British Airways. But very interestingly, when they moved to the Waterside, um, their Waterside HQ, which I also went to because we did a big corporate deal with them. Really interesting building, fantastic building with this huge river running through it. And it's almost like a, one of those sort of shopping malls in Singapore, isn't it? Those kind of amazing, inspirational things. And I remember you saying at World Feng Shui Day that a big part of your brief, Simon, was to give the staff power and to give, make them give them a happy home where they would be really... And, and maybe you gave the staff too much power because <laughs> they since sort of striking and causing all sorts of problems. So interesting, and maybe you'll comment on that later, but interesting how when British Airways moved, their business seemed to shift into a different direction. And I know Jan's got some interesting theories about their logo change as well. So I'm really fascinated by how feng shui impacts business <laughs> and how uh, moving a business sometimes can be an amazing thing, but also it can spell disaster if you get it wrong. So I really would say to you, if you're in business, really understanding what's going on with the energy. And if you're planning to move, be really, really careful about that shift and get some advice before <coughs> you do it. That would be my, my advice to you. The other thing I just want to touch on is personal energy because the energy of the entrepreneur is really crucial in business success. And this is another thing that uh, Sarah talked to me about, Nine Star Key. And this, the principle of Nine Star Key is that the energy goes in a nine-year cycle. And so the, um, the years represent different seasons. So year one is a, is a kind of winter season, all about loss and gloom and vulnerability. And then you have different phases, so rising and flourishing. Year three is like a spring year. Um, uh, year six is all about prosperity. That's autumn. That's about the harvest. And then brightness and fame is the kind of summer year, year nine. And I didn't really take too much of this on board, and that all sounds very nice. And, and I didn't didn't really understand it, but if you think about the principle about there's some certain times of your life to be planting seeds, there are other times to be harvesting, and there are other times when you really need to hibernate. And so understanding where you are in your personal cycle, because if you try and build a new business in the winter, it's like trying to plant a garden in the winter, it's not going to work. And if you want to make it work, you're going to have to put in heaters and lights to make it work, lots of artificial you're going to have to use a lot more energy to make something happen in the winter rather than going with your natural energy of, of creating your business in the spring. So understanding where you are in the cycle is quite interesting. So when I look back, this is post-rationalization again, here was what, where I was with my years. And so um, interesting that actually it all seemed to fit. And so, for example, my year of brightness and fame, that's when I was filming Dragon's Den and it, and it aired in that January, which was still in that year nine. And I was experiencing, despite the business being in problems personally, I was experiencing, experiencing huge fame. <coughs> and then in 2005, I lost the business, which was my year of loss and gloom and vulnerability. And it really was a very tough year, that last year. So, interesting when you start looking at your nine star key, finding out where you are in the cycle. So I've sort of propelled it forward here, so taking it forward now. And again, it fits. So I had that terrible year, a year of worrying, which lo lots of 
challenges and depression post red letter days and problems in my marriage. And then in 2007, getting pregnant, getting a book deal, having all that new energy of new things happening. And so here we are in year six, my year of prosperity. Jury's still out for this year, but the interesting thing is now that I'm a business mentor, and I actually the penny dropped for me this morning because my tagline is inspiring, motivating, and empowering, empowering others to achieve business success. And actually, three of the businesses that I'm involved in are really starting to gather momentum and becoming multi-million pound businesses. So, and they're businesses that I'm involved in and I have a stake in. So interesting how your personal mantras kind of manifest. So actually, the money isn't necessarily from me as a mentor, it's actually through the people that I'm mentoring. So um, interesting year for me and hopefully year seven, eight, nine, wonderful things. I'm going to enjoy the wonderful harvest of all the past five years of my planting seeds and <laughs> nurturing people and, uh, and working towards success. So I am fascinated by the subject of feng shui. Really pleased to be here just to let you know I've got a few copies of my book, Business Nightmares. It's not just my story, it's the story of 20 other successful entrepreneurs who hit a bump in their business journey. It's actually a book about hope, positivity, and optimism in business. And I had a huge fight with my publisher because I wanted a much more positive title. <coughs> but apparently, books with negative titles sell 10 times better in Britain <laughs> than books with <laughs> positive titles. So that's why it's called Business Nightmares. So. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I, as I said, I'm now a business mentor. Um, I go and see a lot of businesses and try and help them on their journey. A lot of the people who call me in are really struggling. And one of the, the things that is really fascinating for me as I walk into a business is to read the energy now. And I'm not a trained feng shui consultant, but I can pick up so much just from the environment of that business, whether it's a shop or an office or walking even into someone's home just reading the energy of what's around them because I can tell so much about what's going on in that business literally in an instant. And it's amazing how simple things, simple changes you can make to businesses <coughs> have dramatic impact. And I would absolutely love to become a proper <coughs> feng shui person, trained, fully fledged. So if any of you gurus, masters in the audience would like a new apprentice, the student is ready. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Jan.